Well, good morning. I uh, always find it uh, a real privilege to share with you uh, just things that will strengthen you in your journey, journey in life, journey in recovery, uh, journey into being the people that God wants you to be. And uh, just uh, honored uh, to be here sharing with you this morning. And uh, I, I want to share with you um, the wingman's way. Now, we've known uh, what a wingman is. That's a person who will stand by us and work with us and help us to become the person God wants us to be. Uh, we should all have wingmen. I am uh, in my 34th year with my current wingman, and I had eight years with other wingmen back in Saskatchewan. So uh, I, I kind of do wingmen. Some of you have been on the call when I had Larry here. Uh, and in fact, I thought I'd maybe bring him on today. He's down in Mexico, though, and... Uh, uh, but yeah, no, it's uh, the wingman way. God, but see, here's what I want to focus on. I want to focus on not you need to get a wingman. I want to focus on God wants to use you to make a difference in the lives of others. He wants you to be a good wingman to other people. And um, I, uh, I'm, 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 I'm grateful for the chance I have to speak into other people's lives to encourage them. And uh, and so um, this morning um, in, in, our, uh, in our discussion, I'm going to be talking about the wingman way from Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 to 10. I'm going to go verse by verse and, and, uh, and, and just look at the implications there about how a wingman operates. What is the wingman's way with other people? And uh, my prayer is that the people I get to encourage, like, for instance, a, a month from now, we're going to have the group of men together here in uh, in Abbotsford um, for the, the retreat, the regroup retreat. And uh, some really cool plans uh, that uh, Warren and Jared and, uh, and Dave Cheeseman from Calgary are putting together. And so... Uh, you know, if you would uh, love to still join us, uh, talking to the guys there, uh, they can still make room for uh, you to join us, especially if you're local. Uh, but, uh, but I want to be this to the men that I meet next weekend, or sorry, in a month from now, in that weekend, I meant to say. So what is the wingman's way? How does God want to use you to make a difference in the lives of other people? Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 to 10, we'll look at it completely through this perspective of you being encouragement to somebody else, you being a dang good wingman, okay? All right. So first of all, a great wingman displays gentle restoration, gentle restoration. Listen to what it says. Brothers and sisters, if someone isn't caught in a sin, that sounds like somebody caught in the sex addiction, the love addiction, the porn addiction struggle. They're caught in some sin. You who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. Listen to it from the New Living Translation. Brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back on the right track. you got to display gentle restoration. When they're caught, they're, they're overcome, they're stuck, maybe they've relapsed. Um, you know, some sin, the sin of selfishness, the sin of lust, the sin of porn, uh, maybe even acting out, but certainly the sin of pride, the sin of independence, because they don't want to be submitting to other people or submitting to other people. Um, but you who are living by the Spirit, you who are walking with God, uh, that means you, you're, you're living surrendered to God. You're living empowered by God. You're motivated by God. You're controlled by God. Uh, you are representing God. And it says that you should restore them. You should help them on the right path. Um, uh, give them a hand up. You know, come here. Come here, and you, and you lift them up. You walk with them through them. You call them to greatness. And, and, and there's, 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 there's grit in that, but there's also grace in that where you reach out, you, you humbly, gently, kindly, compassionately, with understanding and genuine support, you put your hand out and you say, come here, come on, let's keep going. I'm behind you. You can do this. Let's go and work. Start working through the details. So, so displaying gentle restoration. We all need that in our lives. We all need that in our lives. I have really good people who help me uh, by gently kicking me in the butt, or as it were. Uh, number two, maintaining a humble awareness. 
You and I as wingmen need to walk in humility because there's an awareness. Notice what it says there in the second half of verse one. It says, but watch yourselves or you also may be tempted. Be careful, it says in the uh, New Living, and, and be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. And so so as we're helping them up, you want to make sure that you stay clear of the same kind of thing. You don't be a guy who's kind of compromising, compromising, but you're helping others out. And then pretty soon you're going to be crossing the line and being in need of being helped. So 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 there's this 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 desire to pay attention. You're not above other people. Uh, watch the, well, I'm not as bad as they are. I don't need to be in this group. Those guys really got a problem. I don't have a problem. No, 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 no. Get rid of that attitude of pride and a sense of invincibility. Uh, be careful thinking, uh, I, I'm not going to be tempted anymore. I got this figured out. I would never fall like this again. Uh, understand that the scripture is really clear that you too could be tempted in the same way. And uh, uh, and don't think that you, you could never fall in the way that they did. Um, Walk wide awake to the possibilities it could be uh, uh, you next. That's the struggling. I, I'm 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 never I never stop being amazed at how many different ways there's entry into garbage. I mean, just last night I deleted I don't know two friend requests. They're not friend requests. It's it's Betty Boob requests on Facebook. I mean, like, I, I don't go to places that gets me there, but at some reason they throw them in once in a while, say, hey, why don't you be my friend? Or or I get people who follow my posts and they're saying, hey, I really like what you said here. Maybe we could be friends. And I look at little, little Sally's picture there and it's, it's they're just fishing to try to get you into the porn world. These are all, you know, fake names, pseudo names to try to pull you into the porn world. And that comes to me. So, so. I have to stay wide awake uh, of the possibilities that it could be me. I don't want to go there. So delete, delete. Matter of fact, I sometimes show my wife. Check this out, honey. Matter of fact, there are times that you, you uh, there's a story that you might want to read on Facebook and you click to it. And before you get to the story, there's diversion A, diversion B, diversion C. They're all garbage. So I said, I'm not going to go to this story anymore. I, that, that's crazy. So, so don't walk in fear that you're going to fall, but walk in awareness, stay humble. So maintain the humble awareness. Uh, thirdly, we need to bear the burdens, bear, lift up the burdens, carry each other's burdens. And this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Uh, the NLT says, share each other's burdens. And in this way, we obey the law of Christ, carry, uh, lift, share the load here. Let me help. You know, if a guy's struggling with something and you come along and say, hey, let me help. That, that was, that's good words. OK, uh, you have to reach out. Uh, you admit that you've needed help before uh, and you got to be honest about relapses. But you see, the, the person who needs the help has to be honest. I'm struggling or I relapsed or whatever. You've, you've got to you've got to admit that you need someone to help you bear the burden. Right. Uh uh, I can do it by myself is the famous last words of the man who quips, quits regroup and thinks he can recover on his own. I would venture to say that if they would take my call, because some of them won't take my calls when I call, hey, what's up? Where are you been? They don't want to take my call because they know they should be here and they're not doing well. They've relapsed. And, and so so over and over again, there's just this 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 sense that they quit reaching out. They quit saying, I need help, right? Uh, but but here's where it needs to be in these one another support. You help me, I'll help you. We lift together no matter whose load it is. We're just going to come on board to help. We're going to come on board to support. That's the cool thing about the retreat in a month. We're going to be in the presence of one another. There's some groups that meet face to face, and that's that's good. Uh, and they get to support each other, give the bear hugs and all. But but the group that's getting together here in a month, uh, you know, here in Abbotsford, it's going to be a fabulous time. But but it, we help each other um, and, and we bear the burdens. And, and, and the burden is the weight of the pressure of sin's control of our lives. It's that weight, that sense of shame, failure, our failures, our temptations, our battles, our guilt, our shame, our trials and more. <clears throat> And for some of you, this is a crushing load. 
It's an unusual, unexpected, overpowering load. But when it says, in this way, you're fulfilling the law of Christ, right? Uh, the law of Christ is from John chapter 13, 34, 35. <coughs> Excuse me. When he said, a new command I give you, love one another. As I love you, so you must love one another. By this way, will all people know that you're my disciples if you love one another. And that's the law of Christ, to love one another. So we bear each other's burdens. We say, hey, let me help you out. Fourthly, we, we fight any self-deception. As a wingman, now I'm talking to you as a wingman. You're the guy who's helping other people as a wingman. And some of you are still stuck on just trying to fix yourself. Listen, when you're on the journey of recovery, you've got to quit just making it be about you and start being a guy, uh, uh, being a person who will who will stand with others and reach out and encourage others, right? But listen, uh, this fourth thing in verse three, you need to fight self-deception. If anyone thinks they are something when they're not, they deceive themselves. This is what the NLT says. If you think you're too important to help someone, you're fooling yourself. You are not that important, too important to help someone else. I'm too busy. I, I, I don't got time for this. Or, you know, I mean, you know, that guy's too needy or whatever excuses you're giving. Um, but fight self-deception. De There's a danger in an exaggerated view of yourself that uh, this person here, their self-assessment is off. Uh, they're, they're, they're not doing as well as they think. Matter of fact, if you grow cocky, arrogant, overconfident, and proud, uh, you're, you're in dangerous territory. Uh, be careful on being too good to help others, not having time to help others. Caution on being above others. The self-deception is that you're fooling yourself. You're conning yourself. You're betraying yourself. You really don't have it all together. I don't have it all together. I tell you that clearly. Matter of fact, the longer I've been a Christian, the more I know I don't have my act together because Jesus is more discerning in me than ever before. As I let him have freedom in my life, he said, well, we got to deal with this. Yeah, gee, okay, Lord, I'm working on that. Sorry. And, you know, you know, I mean, like, it, it's really clear. The longer I've known Jesus, the more he shows me things I need to deal with. So, um, uh, you know, we do have a long way to go, but sometimes you don't admit it. Uh, but you know what the, the attitude of the men who make it to the thousand day club is thousand days clear. It's pure humility. They never say, I got this. I got this. I'm the guy. No, they're going to, they're going to walk humbly with their God. Um, number five in the verse four, it says this, each of you should test your own actions. Then you can take pride in yourself without comparing yourself to someone else. Take pride in yourself without comparing yourself to someone else. Uh, in the New Living Translation, it says, pay careful attention to your own work. Then you'll get the satisfaction of a job well done, and you won't need to compare yourself to somebody else. So this is, again, Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 to 10, and I'm on verse 4. And, and, and the challenge is an honest self-appraisal, that you'll honestly look at yourself, that you'll test your own actions, that you'll measure honestly, and you'll answer the question, how are you really doing? And you'll be open to other people about it. And, and, and it's not what you're portraying to others. It's the real picture. And, and you've got to ask yourself, what level of hypocrisy is in your life? How much are you feigning you're doing good? Like if, if your wife was on the call and, and you said, yeah, this is how I'm doing. And she goes, baloney. Are you kidding me? He just last night lit it up and screamed at me and walked out and everything. Oh, that sounds like you're doing really good. Right. Uh, okay. So, so an honest self-appraisal that you would honestly uh, talk to others about how you're really doing. Um, number six, you got to carry your own load. Mm, what is that all about? Because I thought we should bear one another's burdens. Now, now understand this. Um, in verse two, where it says, bear one another's burdens, I just implied it a little bit because I wanted to camp on it here. There's two types of loads here. When it says, bear one another's burdens, it is a stinking, crushing load. It's the weight of a piano on you. You know what I'm saying? Like it is, it is, it is heavy. It is, it is ominous. It is overwhelming you. So we need to bear those crushing loads. But 
but, but understand that that when it says each should carry their own load, we're all responsible for our own conduct. Keep in mind that this load here is the expected load. I can't get you out of bed. I mean, if you you know if you wanted me to call you, I suppose I could call you at quarter after six and make sure you're up and coming. But but the point is. There is a crushing load when you're weighed down by heavy temptation and weighed down and struggling and, and you need that support a lot at first. That's the crushing load. We need to bear each other's burdens. But there is an expected load, not a crushing load, expected load. You've got to do the work of recovery. I can't fill out the workbook for you. You have to do the work of getting through soul wounds. You have to do the work of making amends with your spouse. You have to do the work. I can't say, oh, well, listen, let me tell you, you, you your spouse is doing better and they're really sorry. Like, I can't do that. You have to do, you have to carry your load. You're responsible for your work, your recovery, your battle, your journey. We're all responsible for our life, our conduct, our actions, our behaviors. And uh, matter of fact, stop the adolescent excuses. Grow up. Put in the effort. Um, I can't do the work for you. You can't do the work for others. We each must carry our own load. You have to do the work. And you got to want freedom bad enough to put in the effort and follow through and persevere. This is your expected load. Crushing loads, we bear one another's burdens. But there is an expected load. The recovery responsibilities that no one else can do for you. That's carrying your load. Number seven in verse six. <laughs> I, I'm just going to include it just because it's in scripture. I don't want to um, avoid it. But whether it's your group leader or me or um, whatever, your pastor, nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Uh, or, or those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. So, okay, buy me an ice cap. We'll be even, okay? Um, but 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 just, hey, gratitude for the help you're receiving. When, when, you, when you have... Um, People speak into your life. Uh, matter of fact, uh, just in my texting this week uh, with my accountability partner who's away in Mexico, uh, I thanked him again just this week. Now, we've been meeting for over 30 years. But this week in my text, I said, just want you to know how much I appreciate what you bring to my life. Thank you, you know, et cetera, right? Um, and so, uh, yeah. So, so, so honor the teacher. And back in the day when this was written, 10 working men who would tithe to the, the, the local church or assembly or synagogue would pay for the Bible teacher of the local church because they'd give their tithe. And 10 guys, you know, with 10 is enough to have another little, as it were, teacher to, to afford. Anyway, so honor the teacher. Um, number eight, don't mess with God. Verse seven is pretty straight. Do not be deceived, men. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. In the New Living, it says, don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Well, that's good, because if you're going to harvest what you plant, you plant good things, then it's fabulous. But the principle of life is, you know, what grows is what you sow. And so, so this is a life principle. You reap what you sow. Don't fool yourself into thinking that this isn't somehow true about you. You can fool others, but you can never fool God. God sees all. God knows all. He evaluates all. He judges all. His justice is fair and right. Your actions, words, and thoughts are under his scrutiny 24-7. And, and, and it's dark light certainty, uh, scrutiny, rather. It's, it's, it's how you're really doing, not how you're pretending to be doing. And listen, God is gracious. He wants to be with you. He's the one that wants to share the load first of all, even more than we do as wingmen. But but the idea of somehow that I can, uh, you know, I, I, I can be deceived and, 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 and fool God, uh, it just, it just doesn't happen. And so uh, keep, keep that in mind. And uh, number nine, in uh, verse eight, uh, got to anticipate a great future anticipate a great future. Whoever sows to the flesh from the flesh will reap destruction, but whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. From the NLT, it says, those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature, but those who live to please the spirit will harvest 
everlasting life from the spirit. The rules of the game of life are clear and set. What you plant is what grows. Uh, we know how to score to win the battle. We know the end game. Plant wisely, plant good seed, reap great harvests. If you follow the flesh, your life will be destroyed. If you follow the spirit, your life will be restored. This is a serious warning and pleasing and seek, seeking to satisfy my flesh only. It's a downward spiral. It'll go down. It'll go down, down, down. And so, but you can anticipate a great future because if you continue to stay soft to the Lord, I mean, here I am, uh, been following Jesus for uh, 61 years or so. Uh, and I'm still finding new ways to to stay fresh in my growth in him, to keep you know reading a new translation, to continue to see a different perspective on faith. And uh, and so continue to plant good seed like that. Uh, in verse nine, we have the 10th thing I'm going to talk about, and it's uh, never give up. Never give up. As a wingman, one of the greatest gifts that you can do is always be one who's on track. I ran into a pastor um, at an event um, on Saturday morning. I hadn't seen him for a while, but for over 20, well, actually 23 years, I spoke in the chapel at Trinity Western University two to three days in a bit of a mini series every February or March. And for about the last 10 years, this guy was the director of student life, and he was the one that contacted me and invited me in. So I feel, you know, close to him because we work together a lot. It's his students I was speaking to. There'd be a chapel of, you know, four to 600 uh, Trinity students, and I'd be speaking, you know, two or three days uh, every, every year, 23 years in a row. And I ran into him, and we had a wonderful visit. But, but it was so good to connect with him and hear him going on with the Lord. I said to him, I said, I'm really proud of you. I love running into people who, when I sense their heart and sense their spirit and sense where God is taking them, they are pressing on to press on. I haven't spoken Trinity now for uh, likely 10 years, but but I had a nice 23-year run. But I'm telling you, to see this young man, young man, he's likely, uh, I'm going to guess 51, 52 now, but he's going on with the Lord. Uh, he's, 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 he's doing well. Uh, he and his wife are doing well. I had a chance even at this public event afterwards, to just put my arms around them and pray for them. Uh, but, but just a, just a, a beautiful thing. And, um, and, and the beautiful thing about this is, uh, don't get weary in doing what is good at the proper time. You're going to reap a harvest if you don't give up. Uh, and it says in the new living, it says, Let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, you'll reap a harvest of blessing if you don't give up. And so this idea of a wingman who presses on and continues to lift others up and continues to build others up, uh, the blessings are there. But it's clearly, it's don't get weary. Don't get lazy. Don't get tired. Don't get complacent. Don't get casual. Don't get exhausted. Don't get bored. Do what is right and do it over and over and over and over and over again. Never stop. Never quit. Stick with the plan of faithful living. If, and that's if, you do not give up. God will reward your faithfulness, a harvest of blessing. It doesn't mean, you, okay, you're going to struggle sometimes, but struggle to the point of saying, I'm going to dig in, I'm going to, going to reboot, I'm going to re-engage. Um, and at the proper time, it's not always when you want to see it. Sometimes you want to see the blessing right away, uh, but it is a promise that you will reap a harvest of blessing if you don't give up. So as a wingman, don't give up encouraging other people. Don't give up. And uh, number 11, uh, in verse 10, take every opportunity. <laughs> Therefore, as you have opportunity, people in recovery, as you have opportunity, let us do good to all people on this call. Let us do good to all people in our world, especially those who belong to the family believers. It's talking about the importance of us encouraging one another in the faith. The New Living Translation says this, Therefore, whenever you have opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially those in the family of faith. You have today. Do not miss the opportunity to build another person up today. Take interest into their life. Ask good questions. Um, be an encouragement. Um, be a wingman. Make a phone call. Frankly, make a stinking phone call. Come on, guys. I, I, uh, I, 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 I try to not go through a day without having encouraged one person. And sometimes it's easy. I'm encouraging many people during the day, but uh, there's days that I'm kind of off or it's on the weekend. Who am I encouraging today? 
And uh, it says do good to people, not just have good intentions, but actually do good. Intentions make you feel good, but in a moment, but intentions don't bless anyone. Take action. That changes the game. That's when people are truly blessed. And so I challenge you to take the wingman challenge to be a daily encouragement to someone that you would have a mental checkbox that says, did I encourage someone today? Especially those in your breakout group, in regroup, in your family, those closest to you. Be a great wingman. Be a great wingman. Don't just be about showing up to try to keep on track, to try to work on you. That's good. But be a good wingman, someone who is in the other person's corner, encouraging, lifting, building, that you would follow the principles of Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 to 10, and that you would do it the wingman way, lifting others up as a, as a way of life. May that be encouragement to you, that you will become a dang good wingman. Amen.